This is turning out to be one of, if not the most, complex illustrations I have ever attempted. Okay, wait, let's go back to the beginning. In my previous video, I started on an adventure, documenting myself starting from a state of creative block to pulling myself out of it and finding a new spark of inspiration. I'm a big believer that inspiration can come from absolutely anywhere, and this time, it took me down quite an unexpected road. The little flame of inspiration exploded into a full-on fire. In that moment, I knew I wanted to somehow capture the spirit of metal casting with my art, but how? Metal casting. The process of making objects by pouring molten metal into an empty shaped space. The metal then cools and hardens into the form given to it by this shaped mold. It's a skill and an art form that spans across so many different cultures and has centuries of history. It's also a subject that I knew almost nothing about. But nonetheless, that's the subject I'm going to try to capture in an illustration. Testing the microphone. I am currently doing research about metal casting. The main things that I'm looking for before I start thinking about my illustration composition are the tools used, the facilities required, aka the environment, which I have just learned is called a foundry, the basic process of metal casting, which is how that whole process looks, and most importantly, as I'm doing this research, I'm looking for that emotional content. The core spirit of this art form, or at least the spirit that is like connecting with me personally. This is probably the most important part of researching for an art piece, finding emotional content, but it can also be the most difficult because, let's just be real here, research is a pretty dry process. <laughs> it's a lot of reading, it's a lot of watching videos of people talking about esoteric, specific things, and maybe not all of it you're super interested in, but that is your job as an artist, to find that emotional content out of what might seem mundane, and to strike a balance between being respectful and true to the subject that you're illustrating, while also telling your own unique story. And Steve, what the heck are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm getting my moment in the video. Yeah, but Steve, you're totally distracting me right now. I'm doing, like, super important research for this illustration. Yeah, well, you completely excluded me from the previous video. <laughs> so can you blame a whale for trying to just be seen? Hold on, Steve. That's not true. You were in the previous video. Say what? Yeah, you were in the previous video. Let me show you. See? Right there. See? What? Where? Let me slow it down. Look! Right there! I mean, you're even in the thumbnail. What more could you ask for, Steve? Don't you know who I am, Zakira? Is this how little you think of me? Your one and only talking Ami Gurumi way- Anyway, hey, so- unhand me! Back to researching. There was so much to learn, it was a little overwhelming. Metal casting was something I've never done or seen in person, and so even after a ton of research online, I still felt like I knew very little. I had no idea where to even start with an illustration composition. But when you're stuck not knowing what to do, it can be a really good opportunity to try something you've never tried before, something a little unconventional. 
This picture looks so much like a fire. This is a shot in my studio with all the other lights off except for the one inside my little like reading nook area. And especially when shot with this camera, it just totally looks like a glow of like a fire coming out of this spot. And I think I want to do something with this. Like the shape of my chair is kind of giving me a vibe of like Calcifer's fireplace from Howl's Moving Castle. Maybe I can use this to inspire the composition for my metal casting painting. So let's do it. Let's let's give it a try. Trying to morph a photograph into an illustration concept was a very interesting experience. It's almost like working backwards, starting with a finished image, deconstructing it into usable parts, and then reassembling those parts back into something completely different. It was a good challenge and definitely something new for me. But the thing with trying something new is you really don't know what will result from it. So this has turned into something pretty interesting. <laughs> Not sure if I like it, but it's pretty interesting. It's so different than the original photo. Like, look at that. Who would have thought? It's still super loose and sketchy and like this dude is, is like, a, like looking a bit ghostly because I'm not aiming for a digital illustration. I want this to be sort of a thumbnail for a traditional illustration. But at the same time, I'm not completely sure I like the direction of this is going. So I think I'm probably going to go back to my usual way uh, of thumbnailing, keeping this in mind. But I'm going to do just sketch, black and white sketch, and see where that takes us. I don't know. We'll see. I'm kind of figuring this out as I go. There is always a time in every project when you start feeling the pressure. Things are not going the way you thought they would. You're not sure if you'll be able to make it work. I was really starting to feel a bit lost with this composition. I wasn't connecting with it, and I really considered abandoning the idea of illustrating metal casting altogether. Maybe it just wasn't a good idea. But that spark told me to not give up just yet. I decided to unplug myself for a moment, stop looking at the references, stop the research, stop overthinking it, and just picked up my pencil and my sketchbook, closed my eyes, and tried connecting back to that initial spark I felt when I saw that first photo and short documentary about metal casting. Sometimes the best ideas are already inside you. All you need to do is cut the distractions, pick your favorite thinking spot, and let it flow. For me, that's sitting on the corner of my table. Don't ask me why, I have no idea. I guess it's just a feng shui thing. Like all the creative energy in my room just culminates in that corner. Thankfully, this desk is very strong and can be sat on. And like magic, on my first concept sketch, I ended up with an idea that I fell in love with. I had this image in my mind of a tall, round room with the metal smith pouring the metal, and all around him are shelves going up and up and up, all displaying his beautiful creations. Normally, I wouldn't spend time to think about where or how this composition popped into my head, but since I was trying to document and follow the thread of inspiration for this video series, I discovered some eye-opening things. Remember those Castle in the Sky sketches I did in the previous video? Well, the shape of this room, which I imagine to be made out of bricks, looks oddly similar to that big smokestack attached to Patsu's house, doesn't it? Coincidence? Maybe. But it didn't stop there. In Castle in the Sky, Patsu's town is a mining town. I don't recall them doing any kind of metal casting, but they were digging for precious metals. There was plenty of tools and gears and hey, is it just me or is that an old style smelting furnace in the opening credits? Huh. Could all of this have played a subliminal role in why I was suddenly attracted to metal casting? I guess I can never say for certain because the conscious part of my brain just popped the composition image in my head. But the thread of inspiration truly takes a complex and winding path in and out of our conscious and subconscious. I think that is why people always wonder and ask artists where they get their inspiration, and artists continue to give unclear answers.
Okay, confession time. I finished these concept sketches on Sunday and it is now Thursday. <laughs> I have completely procrastinated on this illustration for four days. The next step is for me to do the final sketch that I will then print out and transfer onto my watercolor paper and then just put together the painting. And I wanted to just kind of capture myself in this moment right now because I'm sure once I put together this video, if it works out, I will probably say something in the narration about how procrastination is part of the process <laughs> and it's all fine and it's all great. Oh, in the moment, Sakura, you know me all too well. Maybe it is, but I also wanted to just capture myself right now in the moment while I'm procrastinating and just recognize how that feels. It does not feel good. <laughs> you feel like you wasted time. I feel like I've wasted time. Um, I remember seeing a presentation some time ago about how procrastination is like a necessary part of the creative process. But another part of me just thinks maybe that was created by procrastinators as an excuse <laughs> for our procrastination. <laughs> I think as long as it doesn't make you give up. Because I think sometimes you can get so guilty about your procrastination that you're just like, well, I've waited this long, might as well wait even longer. And then it just becomes this cycle until you just give up. Even through these four days of not actually physically progressing with the painting, I have been absorbing myself in more research about iron casting. I've learned about the furnaces. I, I've, I finally settled on which kind of furnace I'm going to use in this painting. It's called the Coppola Furnace. And I probably needed that time really to sort of meditate on it and just learn more about it in order to really do this painting justice, which I hope I will do. That still remains to be seen. <laughs> of course, the consequences of procrastination are that you have more worries. I have to think about my deadlines. I have to think about my channel. I don't want to go too long without posting a video or without making any art. And all those thoughts are running through my mind right now. But you know what? It's sunny. <laughs> it's a sunny day. Oh my gosh, it's a beautiful it is a sunny day, finally. These last four days have just been so dark and so rainy. So that really took a lot out of me. So yeah, there's a lot of excuses, <laughs> but you know what, that's all right. We ain't, we ain't perfect human beings and we're not going to be making all the best decisions all the time. Sometimes we're gonna waste time. Sometimes we're going to put ourselves in harder situations, but that's part of being human. The important thing is to just recognize it, show love for it so that you can move on. That, that is the most important thing, move forward get some good stuff done. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hop over to my computer, finish up the sketch, and then we'll move on from there. This illustration concept ended up being quite the undertaking. As mentioned, I'm planning on this piece being traditionally done on paper, but I decided to do the sketch digitally because it allows more freedom to adjust things, which I really needed because it was going to be a very complex composition. I wanted the foundry, the room, to feel lived in, worked in. I wanted it to be cluttered and detailed. But whenever working with a lot of detail, you run the risk of suppressing the impact of your illustration. As I gain more experience with art over the years, I've come to learn that good art, impressive art, is not about putting as many lines on the page as you can, but rather it's about making sure that every line you do put has a purpose. Every single object and detail you put into an illustration has the power to either enhance or distract from the story that you're trying to tell. Art is ultimately about storytelling. It's not just about showing off your excessive cross-hatching skills. Sure, that kind of stuff might impress people a bit at first, but it's not going to be what stays with them after they click off social media. What is going to stay with them is your underlying story and whether or not they were able to connect with it. Adding too much useless and unthought through detail into a piece just to make it more fancy will usually backfire. It will only serve to cover up and bury that underlying story. So, with every single object and detail I added into this piece, I asked myself the same question. 
Does this add to my story or distract from it? With the amount of details I was working with, I had to ask that question a lot. And it took a lot of thinking, a lot of adjusting, a lot of time, and as you saw, a lot of research. But even after all of that, I am sure I've left unintentional faux pas throughout this composition. Every art piece has its mistakes, and that is okay, because that is how you improve. The detail I spent the most time thinking about and researching was the furnace, because I felt that of all of the tools, the furnace was really at the heart and soul of this art form. As mentioned, I based the design of the furnace off of a real-life cupola-type furnace, as it's called. And it's one of the few types of furnaces that are able to reach temperatures hot enough to melt ferrous metals, such as iron, which has one of the highest melting points of the common metals. Not every furnace can reach such high temperatures, and I really wanted to choose a model that is based in reality. something that if a real-life metal caster looked at this illustration could pick it out and say, hey, that kind of looks like something I know, even if I did alter and add to the design in fantastical ways. And I could go on about every little detail in this illustration and why it's all meaningful to me, but I think I'm going to keep most of that to myself for now. Because even though the story of your piece is incredibly important to think about as you're composing it, it's also incredibly important to acknowledge and embrace the fact that every single viewer will interpret that story in their own unique way. And though they may not own the illustration, they get to own that unique experience. That is what makes illustration and painting and other forms of visual art so beautiful. And so sometimes revealing too much of the creator's own perspective can take away from that unique experience. Honestly, I'd be more curious to hear your guys' interpretation. Perhaps by looking at this piece and all of its details, you can piece together your own story. If you've got a good one, drop it below in the comments, I'd love to hear it. This is turning out to be one of, if not the most, complex illustrations I have ever attempted. I am really starting to feel that pressure. <laughs> I have no idea if my skills are up to the challenge here. Maybe we'll find a way. You gotta step out of your comfort zone sometimes. You gotta attempt those really hard, kind of scary projects. But it's during those challenges that you learn the most, you grow the most, and you become a better artist. This whole project has been such a journey to just film everything as it's happening. I have no idea what's gonna happen next, just as much as you guys. And there is so much risk involved in that, because for all I know, I could totally screw this up. <laughs> and what will I have to show for it? But as they say, courage is not the lack of fear, but rather the will to keep going even when you're afraid. I do not know if I am going to be able to pull this off, but I'm going to try and I'm going to do my- I'm, I'm gonna put my absolute best into this thing. Let's keep this fire going. On the second day of working on this sketch, I was quite focused and absorbed because I felt like it was taking quite a long time and I needed to get along. But thankfully, I took a second to look out my window because something magical happened. Oh my gosh, I just looked out my window and it is snowing. It just started snowing. First snow of the season. I gotta go outside. Let's go outside, let's go outside, let's go outside.
that I was cold. Oh, my hand is like so red right now. So cold outside, but I love it at the same time. Gotta remember to get my gloves out. <laughs> Winter is finally here. Winter has come at last. The first snowfall came out of nowhere right before the evening. If I had been too absorbed in my sketch, I probably would have missed it. From the warmth of my studio, I watched as the grass and the pavement and the roofs of houses slowly turned white. I could watch snow all day. And for that last half an hour before nightfall, that is exactly what I did. More procrastination, perhaps. But my art project would still be there. It's turning into quite the overwhelming piece of art. With the digital sketch completed, the only thing left to do is transfer it to my paper, choose my color palette, and get to the final and scariest step. Painting. Will I be able to pull it off? Will I ruin it? Will all this time I've spent on research and planning be for nothing? Or will something wonderful come out of it? Only time will tell. I can't control the future any more than I can control the changing of the seasons. So right now, I'm just going to embrace and enjoy this first snowfall, because the uncontrollable parts of life certainly creates a lot of challenges, but they can also be so gosh darn beautiful. does this darn camera thing work? Hello. Oh, darn it. Hello. Steve here. Ah, snow. It's so pretty, isn't it? And you know what happens when snow melts? You get water. And you know what happens when you have a lot of water? You get oceans. And you know what happens when you have oceans? You get whales. Huh? Steve, if you gotta do this, can you at least stick to the script, please? But I have so much important information to share with you. Nobody people. watches the outro anyway. What? What do you mean, nobody watches? Just do it, Steve. Please. Please. For me. Fine. Stay awesome, stay inspired, and go find your spark. How was that? <laughs>